Hi everybody, Brian here from quantumlabs.net. Today uh, I want to talk about uh, the second article. I just had another article pop up about this new Jim Simmons book. Um, and uh, this is now an article from Forbes. Uh, you may have not read the, one, the original article on uh, Wall Street Journal, but uh, this is a different article. Uh, it's uh, found on Forbes.com. Uh, the article name is How Billionaire Jim Simmons Learned to Beat the Market and Began Wall Street's Quant Revolution. So uh, the book is called uh, The Man Who Solved the Market, How Jim Simmons Launched the Quant Revolution. Uh, this guy, Gregory uh, Zuckerman, uh, and also uh, wrote this article. So a couple of charts I want to show you. I don't know why these are not working properly, but regardless, you'll see how uh, this net worth of Jim Simmons has, has exponentially grown. Only five years ago, he's worth $12 billion. And each year, he's added uh, virtually pretty close to $10 million, billion, billion with a B, nine, $9, $10 billion in the last five years. It's absolutely one of those stories where you got cash, it just exponentially grows when everything's done right. Um, another uh, article here or that's really interesting is it, the fund for Renaissance Technologies, total assets was worth uh, $50 billion, and this year, uh, that was 2017, and then 20, this year, it's worth $18 billion. So in two years, it's grown $18 billion. Absolutely mind-boggling. Um, growth there on top of uh, these are some of the folks when I posted this article on um, this is uh, BNN Bloomberg uh, inside the quant gold uh, sorry wrong one uh, let me see if I can find it uh, that's another story as well I've posted that already let me just see here uh, right here so some of the people that have um, already commented this is found in my quant trading group uh, on Facebook, some of the comments he's brilliant, brilliant hard work, studying, and lucky timing. Um, so, there you go on that. What I want to do is talk about some of the highlighted points that we can take away from this article and um, some of the other things that we can learn from it. <coughs> so, uh, the company was going to be called Mana. Mono net metrics, um, but he decided he wanted to go into venture capital uh, corporation um, based upon uh, focusing on upstart companies. That's what he's currently doing in New York in one of these buildings uh, as one of his philanthropy now is helping a lot of startups uh, outside of trading more in sciences. So he's kind of doing that now. Um, and then one thing uh, that was learned during the process, much money trading various currencies using intuition and instinct that pursuing a systematic quantitative style of trading seemed a waste of time. That was one of his earlier partners. And I think from what I read, uh, the partner didn't do so well. And... Uh, as a result, Simons almost uh, gave up on trading. Another thing was um, uh, 2018, spent more than three decades perfecting new ways to invest, inspired revolution of financial world, legitimizing quantitative approach to trading. That's all I hear about on uh, Bloomberg these days. Seemed everyone in the finance business is trying to invest the Renaissance way. Uh, I have some tech ideas on how it's done. Uh, digesting, building mathematical models, anticipating the direction of various investments and employed automated trading systems. Simon's uh, success validated the field of quantitative reasoning using math. And uh, when you look at places like Goldman Sachs now, one third of their uh, staff is, are coders. Um, and there was another article I just posted or could have posted about how JP Morgan is taking coders and turning them and giving them uh, trading licenses um, because that's the direction everything's going. I mean, it's already here, and it's all going machine learning as well. 
So uh, further along, quants and other in various industries have embraced Simon's machine learning techniques. Those techniques were from another partner, uh, Bob Mercer and uh, Simon's, I think also worked in IBM early days, probably what would have been now AI and linguistics. And I've talked to quite a few people who say in linguistics and capital markets are two think hardest things to apply machine, machine learning to. Um, and I think they've pretty well mastered it now. That he, indeed, he, he and his colleagues at Renaissance have anticipated transformation in decision making that's sweeping almost every business and walk of life. Uh, so here's the key. This is how it's now done, not using the old school, old dinosaur way, um, as one put it, where you'd go through a big thick of uh, deal books and pitching uh, based on that. Those days are done. We know about electronic trading is done away with the tick ticker tape concept, but now it's all machine learning, all data driven. And they propose hypothesis, test, measure, and adjust their theories. That's when you look at math. I've shown one of, uh, well, the, the uh, paper, uh, graduation paper of um, Marcos de la Praia. Um, I've got one of his, the original hard copy. Um, I actually have shown that online. Um, I can show that to you on my channel if you want to see that video. And that is real quant. That's what James Simmons does. That's what his whole team does. Uh, it's pure math. And that's what uh, how they achieve these massive profits that uh, people want to chase a lifestyle, but they don't understand uh, what got them there. So if you look for, um, I'll just put the term in real quant. And let's hope for the best on this search um, right here this video called what real quant hft looks like from advanced math phd doctor book now as i said that is um dr marcos de la praia um looks like uh that book there um and uh, it goes through everything in there. But what I wanted to show you is the concepts of, of profit uh, or, or what people have said in the comments is quite interesting. Um, uh, great work as always. Um, always, as people want this book, there's uh, advanced and, and waiting for your answer. Can I study master quantitative studies? Without bachelor, of bachelor, uh, bachelor, bachelor, masters, indeed, uh, uh, in bachelor of finance and accounting, and there's these all these misconceptions. Um, no bullshit. I'm doing a master's in Germany and have no bachelor in economics. I haven't taken a look at these in, in decades. Yeah. So this person says a quantitative financial entity is strong at math, but also requires understanding of financial theory economics and even accounting if we have a strong background like we can study quantitative finance so at the end of the day this is what it looks like it's full of models um i think matlab's probably one of the best software tools out there for this but that's what real quant looks like none of this uh, one plus one stuff all right so continuing along uh <clears throat> so that's that's the crust of it right there in my opinion the Gaines and Simons and his colleagues have achieved might suggest that there are inefficiencies in the market. We hear about that. Renaissance showed that with enough data, computational power, and modeling experience, it's possible to deduce many hidden factors moving the security price otherwise invisible to other investors. Yes, uh, I've done some uh, looking at reviews of the top trading people, warrior trader, uh, I guess years ago, Tim Sykes, um, those guys are accused, and I'm here to say accused of front loading, which is illegal. So basically, um, the hidden factors on what we're talking about with the chumps that spend thousands of dollars on these courses and signal and chat room services, um, these guys are what they're accusing and what front loading is, 
is if they put out a pick on a stock for whatever reason, um, and they got 500, and I've heard up to 2,000 people in a room waiting for that pick on a stock, and he goes, I am going to trade here. And then he's got this system that you can watch, and you can uh, jump in when he jumps in, and it, and it drives up the price. He's got 2,000 people doing that. The key there is that they're using the uh, that stock picking, because they're so lazy, that they're using that um, to uh, as a crutch. They're not actually understanding the real reason why that is being picked. But meanwhile, in front loading, they'll have this system. It's a real account, real amount of, of, of stock. But the thing is, is that there could be another account that we don't know, or the, the, those 2,000 users may not know. He may have already bought the stock. So he's, he's loaded up. Then he goes on the chat room and says, I, I'm buying right now this stock. Even though he's already in it, price gets driven up. He gets out on his other system that you don't know. Hidden factors, we'll call it. And he's out. And he's already driven up the price because he's got 2,000 people following him. And these are all small stocks that are e-liquid. And um, quite fascinating that people don't do their research. No different than another hidden investment factors why do you think brokers are giving away uh, have zero commission it's because that data that trade flow that people are trading through uh we'll just call it uh it's definitely not in your neighborhood hint hint um y you you will uh not know but they make 10 times more money uh trading that um they're selling the data flow to some high frequency trading shop. It's illegal. And again, what these other gurus do is illegal too. Uh, the front loading, uh, I'm not just gonna uh, explicitly say the ones that I've mentioned, but um, that's why you, you gotta use the word accused, but it's illegal what they're doing. And that's how they make real cash. Um, and uh, they're brilliant at it. So a lot of people don't know about James Simmons is that he used to do options trading and he, avoided tax uh, and he was getting grilled um, on uh, the uh, Congress about these these con concepts of these instruments and he was avoided to av avoid a lot of tax so again that's all hidden that we don't know about and uh, obviously you know about the uh, level of secrecy of uh, this firm um, and we know nothing about them I mean just go to their website uh, so when it comes to these inefficiencies, I think they still are out there. Uh, we just don't know about them. And um, uh, when you watch all these YouTube videos and all these idiots in their pimp and whore lifestyle, pimp and hoe lifestyle with their Ferraris and Lamborghinis, um, they get sucked into that stuff. And uh, meanwhile, we got the kind of growth that I showed you in the previous article. Last paragraph here that I've highlighted is, in truth, there are very likely very few inefficiencies and opportunities for investors that generally presume. Remember, these guys are using heavily um, heavy math. And uh, I just showed you one video on what it looks like. Most people can't do it. I can't do it. For all the unique data uh, computing firepower, special talent, hint, hint, on physicists and weird astronomy, and trading and risk management expertise renaissance has gathered the firm only profits on uh, barely more than here's the, here's another startling stat they're making barely any profit on 50 percent of its chain uh, trades so here i'm complaining about my win ratio and they aren't able to uh, get more than 50 percent or barely over 50 percent but yet you saw the returns and the growth, the exponential growth on the performance on these funds that they have. I just just mind-boggling on that. A science of how challenging it is to beat the market, which it is. Uh, I can attest to that. And how foolish it is for investors, to more, most investors to try. And that brings us back to the, why the 90% lose. So it's really, I put up a video on it earlier, um, Persistence. Um, so I was going to show you. Okay, so if I go to my... Uh, I forgot to mention here, uh, if you're interested in this sort of stuff, just uh, head on over to the Quant Labs net 
slash book and just sign up. I got some stuff that a lot of people don't know. Screeners, open source screener, uh, another Excel program or an add-in that does that as well. So stuff like that. Anyways, um, going back to my blog, I've studied uh, Mr. Simmons and his operation. A lot of people don't know, but there's Jim Simmons, there's a guy named something Brown, and Bob Mercer. Bob Mercer was a guy that helped fund Donald Trump. And then if you probably may have heard of the split between the partners and Bob Mercer, and he, Bob Mercer was the CEO of Renaissance and basically resigned uh, because of the political friction uh, in, in the um, top-notch folks in Renaissance. And again, uh, it was Bob Mercer that funded uh, uh, Donald Trump. So was, uh, let me look up uh, if I can do a search on Mercer here. So I'm on my blog there. Uh, there's a couple of articles that are interesting. And this is the time, that's how um, James Simmons met, um, uh, James Simmons met uh, Bob Mercer, or Robert Mercer. So this is the article I was looking for. Um, so here you go. Uh, Rentec airs battle with Mercer over Trump. And then we have this article here, ex-chief Robert Mercer at Renaissance Technology HFT was earlier adopter of machine learning. That was our job um, in, uh, in uh, IBM. Look at the other article here. Okay, that might be it. And I've given links. There was a research paper out. I don't know if, you, if it's even out there, but um, this was quite interesting. Uh, let me see here. This might be it. So I've done some research. I don't know when the date was, but I think it was back in 17, it looks like. Okay, so I think it's this one, the secret sauce one. Uh, let me see here. Robert Mercer. Okay, we have statistical machine learning. see if I can find the actual article uh, I'm putting this together just so people understand so you can see here Robert Mercer worked on this book uh, uh, let me see here organizations constraint solving so here I'm looking for the name Mercer. Let's see here. Okay, we got that. Uh, I'm sure it's somewhere in there, but uh, if you want to get your hands on this article, um, that was probably, I don't know what's going on. Here, uh, but this was the book Logic for Programming, Artificial Intelligence, and Reasoning. So there was a, a footnote on, on something that uh, Bob Mercer put out. So be aware of that. Uh, let me see on the secret sauce stuff. Okay. Um, let's see here. Historical bio. Here we go. Okay, so um, so it's not just uh, so here he's doing this speech, backing uh, Ted Cruz. Um, uh, let's see here, Quant Exchange. Let's see here. Lots of questions here. Okay, so there's this book called Pat from Patterson. Uh, using intensely algorithmic trading, from what I understood, they are using information theory. They worked with Shannon, if I remember well. I'd say it to be harsh to say it's the same. It's the next Madoff and background, blah, 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 blah. 
So there is some interesting stuff here. So let's see what this book is about. Horace, new breed of math whizzes. I guess we're not going to go very far with that, but there was a research paper somewhere in one of these articles. Lantex secret formula sent by buy signal. Let's see what we got here. All righty. Um, Jim Simmons. Uh, I don't know, but, uh, uh, let's see here. It might be one more. Uh, anyways, I'm, or this manifold learning. That is quantitivity. Well, I know that Churn and Simmons have worked on a formula suggesting predictive model historically referred to the base is not one, but rather a collective of heterogeneous models, which are dynamically overlaid and mixed seems reasonable given market regime. So here's one, uh, applied signal processing. Now here we go. This might be what I'm looking for. Computational linguistics, NLP, linguistics. Numerous high profile originate from speech recognition of which numerous advancements over the past 30 years, applied signal processing and statistical information theory Mathematics of Statistical Machine Translation by Bot Brown, Petra, Mercer. This was the current CEO of, of uh, Rentech. He is the guy we're talking about, and then James Simmons. Particularly consistent theme is HMM, going back to the Dragon System by Baker, which originally supported mixing HHMM and cause casual filtering who worked with Kelly and that question is if that's Kelly criterion so let me pull up this one so from the University of Penn If this is still around. We'll just see here. Mathematics of statistical machine translation. So that's the PDF we want. Let's see if we can find it here. Didn't get it. No, it's still downloading, which means it can't find it. PDF. Parameter estimation. Cited 1993. So, see uh, who the current CEO is. Renaissance Technologies. CEO. I think it's Brown. So Robert Mercer, he's still te CEO. Let's see if we have any. So Peter Brown, CEO. That's who we're looking for. Because if that is, okay, so that might be the research paper. Looks like I got some. Mathematics Statistical Translation Parameter Estimation, Peter Brown and Robert Mercer. So here you go. Note that bling.
gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. So we have here a new people we just found here. Okay. So what we have here is this is the paper. So we have Robert Mercer. Who owns currently technologies? Uh bum 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 bum. How many? Who found it? Okay. So Peter Brown, co chief executive. Peter Brown. Peter Brown, right? And then we also have uh, Robert Mercer, who was CEO. And guess what we've just found? We have found the research paper of Peter Brown, Robert Mercer, the two guys that have recently been running the um, good old, wow, here we go. So these are the guys from IBM, that research center, that have got this research paper on, uh, could be the early, early, early research of, of um, Rentech. So I'll do this here. Translation models. There we go. So here comes the math. Model one. Model two. Well, if somebody could translate that for me, that'd be awesome. So what I'll do is I'll put this in the blog. Um, but uh, I don't think I've come this far. But I didn't realize that it was uh, both uh, Peter Peter Brown, current CEO of Rentech, and also co-sharing that with uh, Robert Mercer. Unreal. Okay, so I'll post this. Get your copies while they're out there. Um, I'm going to definitely save mine. <laughs> oh, man, that's pretty... Pretty impressive. There you go. I have it. Okay. I uh, hope it'll help you out. Let me know what you think. I didn't think we'd be going this far, but there you go. One of an example of probably something that Rentech would be doing. And it looks like it's from the early 90s as references of it in 90, 91. That's pretty awesome. I'll talk to you soon and have a good day.